Hey everybody, welcome back to Tuesday Bingo, where we are working hard to help you connect with your destination better. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you so much for stopping by and welcome. We conduct our own research, distribute our own surveys to try and get to the bottom of the top 10 foods for these different places. But today's video is gonna be a little different. You see, recently I just finished a trip backpacking through the entirety of central Poland, everywhere from the Tatra Mountains that border Slovakia up to the north shores of the Baltic Sea. And this video is gonna be about my opinion of the top 10 foods. So without further ado, let's get into the top 10 foods of Poland, part two. So before we begin, I just wanna throw out there that these foods are in no specific order and were all delicious in their own right. Uh, being Polish myself, I was beyond surprised about how great the food was in the country. I was expecting to be eating pierogies the entire time, you know, the occasional kielbasa, but it was way more than that and there was so much more flavor and so much more stuff going on than I could have ever expected or imagined. So thank you, Poland. Thank you to the cooks. Thank you to the restaurants. Thank you to everybody that <laughs> played a part in satisfying my belly. Let's get to it. The first spot on our list goes to the Donner Kebab. This might come as a surprise since kebabs are a classic piece of Middle Eastern cuisine and aren't usually associated with Polish fare. Meat-wise, chicken and beef are the main attractions here. They're cooked on a vertical rotisserie and placed in a toasted pita in a way that resembles a burrito gyro hybrid. Feta cheese, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, and some sauce will be thrown in there too to accompany the meat. And generally, there are two sauce options here. One that's not spicy and one that's spicy. And although I'm not entirely sure as to what these sauces were, I'd imagine the not spicy being similar or exactly the same as the cooling yogurt-based zabati, and the spicier of the two being the pepper-based harissa. The greasiness of the meat, the crunch from the fresh vegetables, and the flavors from the supporting sauces <laughs> make for an extremely satisfying bite after a night of ripping vodka shots and sipping on brewskis at your local pub crawl. Donner kebabs are a late night staple that you can always depend on. Now the Donner Kebab is believed to be a 19th century creation from Turkey. Then in the 1920s, this Turkish style of cooking made its way to fellow Mediterranean Greece where the gyro blew up. It looks pretty similar, right? And somehow the practice of making Donner Kebabs made its way to London in 1966. Ever since then, it's blown up and is one of the most popular fast food options in European history. Coming in hot, the next spot on our list goes to vodka. Vodka is an alcoholic distillate product of fermenting things, most commonly cereal grains or potatoes. It's said to be the most neutral and versatile alcohol because it's meant to have zero taste, zero flavor, and zero color. But we're not drinking water here. You're definitely gonna get hints of that ethanol alcohol in the smell and in the taste. But because it is so neutral and versatile, Vodka is very commonly and easily flavored with different things. My recommendation of a flavored vodka to try in Poland, without a doubt, goes to Zubrovka's Bison Grass Vodka. Many will agree that this infusion gives a very fresh and floral taste with hints of vanilla and subtle cinnamon. The bison grass that's sourced for this vodka comes from northeastern Poland in the Białowieża forest, which is also home to the largest number of wild living bison in Europe. So cool. And in Poland, vodka is generally served freezer chilled and should be drunk neat. Now, vodka has been a part of Poland since the Middle Ages and is associated with the country the same way that champagne is in France or whiskey in Ireland. And Poland once believed that vodka possessed medicinal properties and it was prescribed to increase fertility and to awaken lust. Na zdrowie. The next spot on our list goes to beer. This naturally carbonated beverage is the product of fermenting different cereal grains and hops. And although flavors are across the board depending on what type of beer is being made and its recipe, most will agree that they lean bitter and are extremely satisfying. Now, beer has been a part of Polish culture for over a thousand years 
And the country is Europe's third largest producer after the United Kingdom and Germany. Some of the leading brands of Brewski that you might encounter include Zivich and Tiskier, which are both easy to drink pale lagers that boast a golden hue with slight hoppiness. And then there's Lek, which is also equally as easy to drink, but this one is a Pilsner. Now there's definitely way more beers than these three, but these you can sip on all day, and you should, with vodka in the other hand, of course. Beer was a big part of my Polish experience. Zivich, Chantiskie, I had mostly eating out of restaurants in that kind of a setting where the lek was more reserved for late nights talking around the dinner table at the hostel. Cheers. The next spot goes to the pierogi. This world famous Polish dumpling can either be served sweet or savory, boiled or pan fried, but it must be made using an unleavened dough that conceals whatever is hidden inside. Fillings that one might encounter include potato, cheese, some sort of meat, spinach, mushroom, and anything from blueberries to apples to strawberries. Potato and cabbage would be an example of a savory option, whereas apples or blueberries would be examples of sweet options. The most basic pierogi dough is made with just water and flour, but egg, mashed potato, or different kinds of fruit can be thrown in there too to spice things up a little bit. Once constructed, pierogi are boiled at the very least, but they can also be pan fried in some butter for some extra flavor, browning, and crispiness. Savory varieties can be topped with caramelized onions, sour cream, mushrooms, chopped bacon, where sweeter options might be topped with a sweetened sour cream, more fruit, some kind of jam, something like that. Now, like many other classic old world foods, the history here is a little blurry. No one really knows where the pierogi actually came from, but evidence points towards somewhere in Central or Eastern Europe and could have easily fallen between the boundaries of modern day Poland. Originally, pierogi were a very economical food that was really only eaten by the financially less fortunate, but eventually they gained popularity within every socio-economic class. This cultural evolution is the reason that the pierogi is such a staple in today's Polish diet. Pierogi were everywhere. The next spot goes to Ashepek. This is a smoked sheep's cheese that looks just as great as it tastes. Salted and unpasteurized milk is turned into cottage cheese, rinsed with boiling water, and then shaped into the edible pieces of art that they are. After this, they're wet brined for a couple days and then hot smoked for a couple weeks. Taste-wise, you're looking at salty and smoky, earthy and tart, with a texture that's rubbery and firm. And to balance all of these flavors out, it's generally served with some sort of sweet fruit preserve on top. It's real nice. This cheese originates in southern Poland in the area near the Tatra Mountains and takes advantage of the local Highlander's sheep's milk. Now, this cheese did seem like it was mostly a tourist treat, but it was sold in every city that I visited, everywhere from down in the Tatra Mountains in Zakopane all the way up to Gdansk and the Baltic Sea. But I do think this one is worth the eat, mostly because of its locality, geographic historical relevance, and just utter good looks. The next spot goes to a stone fruit, the Damson Plum. These plums are recognized by their dark purple, almost black colored skin, greenish colored flesh, and sweet but slightly acidic taste. In Poland, their peak season is summertime through mid-fall. And during this time, they're gonna be sweet and juicy, firm, but easy to bite through. And I found these plums everywhere. I saw them fresh, turned into jams. They were baked inside of danishes, donuts, and cakes. However, my favorite dish that highlighted the Danson plum was hands down a side dish called knedle. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is a potato dumpling that houses an entire plum and is sprinkled with cinnamon and sugar. Yum. The next spot on our list goes to the grain that we call rye. Rye is commonly used to make things like breads, whiskeys, vodkas, or soups. And compared to other cereal grains like wheat 
there is a lot more going on here. Rye's flavor is tangy, malty, nutty, and extremely fragrant, and gives a lot of flavor to whatever it's being cooked into. When I was there, rye products seemed abundant. Rye bread was served with many meals, and Zurich, a fermented rye soup, was on most menus at pretty much every restaurant. And although these were the two main ways that I saw rye in the country, I saw them a lot. Now, rye has been cultivated in Central Europe since the Middle Ages. And yes, Poland is a Central European country, not Eastern. This means that rye has been grown in and around Poland for over 1,500 years, making it incredibly intertwined in the country's culinary heritage. The next spot goes to Paczki. These filled donuts are oh so delicious. They're deep fried, filled with something, and are usually coated with a sugar glaze or healthily sprinkled with some powdered sugar. They closely resemble a Boston cream or jelly donut, However, this is no ordinary jelly donut. Their dough is much richer, slightly sweeter, and arguably has a lot more flavor. Common fillers include raspberry jam, blueberry jam, Bavarian cream, plum butter, apples, but the list goes on and on and on. Paczki shops were in every city and town that I visited, and man, <laughs> did I eat a lot of them. Like many other foods on this list, these donuts have been around since the Middle Ages and are very closely associated with the Christian holiday, Fat Thursday. This holiday is a let's eat anything and everything kind of a day, where celebrators get to indulge in their last sweet bites before giving them up for Lent. And although they are closely associated with this holiday, I am almost certain that you're not gonna have a hard time scouting these guys out when you visit. The next spot on our list goes to a Varzenek. This is a braided, ring-shaped bread. And although they might resemble the New York City bagel and are the closest descendant to one, they're not entirely the same. But for argument's sake, a Varzenek is the braided dough cousin of the breakfast staple that we know here in America. Texture-wise, these breads are chewy and dense with slight sweetness. And if you are familiar with bagels here in America, you'll know they're generally cut down the middle to make room for different spreads, eggs, or breakfast meats. That's not the case here. These bad boys are eaten straight up, no filling. However, they are flavored with different toppings. Sesame seeds and poppy are the most common, but you can find them with a few other options as well. A Varzenek is generally sold in street carts throughout the cities, towns, squares, and train stations of the country, and they've been around for a pretty long time. The first records of this bread date back to Krakow in 1394. Then in 1496, the king of Poland granted Krakow exclusive rights to baking any kind of white bread. This included a Varzenek. But since then, the rules did relax, and you can pretty much find it in most cities now. These are great, fresh baked, early in the morning with a cup of coffee, waiting for your next train. We are pretty much at the end of the list here, but I did want to give an honorable mention wild card shout out to the Italian cocktail, the Aperol Spritz. This cocktail is made up of Aperol, Italian sparkling wine, Prosecco, club soda, and bitters, and it's usually garnished with a thick chunk of orange wedge. This drink was everywhere and served with lunch, dinner, or if you were just getting cocktails with your friends. And although I didn't do much research on this, I did ask around when I was there, and most people said the only reason it's popular is just because of marketing and advertising dollars from Aperol. And it's definitely worth the try. The last spot goes to Goose. Goose popped up on a lot of menus throughout my time in Poland, and from what I can gather, the Emden Goose is the breed of choice here. This species of goose actually comes from Germany and has been there since the 13th century. The Emden Goose is the largest species of this bird in the region, making it extremely worthwhile and financially efficient in the culinary world. Similar to chicken and turkey, one can find both white and dark meat in various places throughout the goose pod. And taste-wise, many will say that this is the most flavorful bird in the poultry world. This is most likely due to its high fat content. The higher the fat, generally the higher the flavor. 
Many also say that it has a slightly gamier taste that's like a combination of chicken, duck, and beef that's also richer because of that high fat content. Goose seemed like the unsung hero amongst Poland's eateries, popping up on menus occasionally, but intentionally. The first encounter that I've ever had with Goose was in the Jewish ghetto of Krakow, where I ate stuffed goosenecks, sipped on kosher vodkas, drank local beers, and listened to some wonderful violin music. It was magical. So there you have it, guys. The top 10 foods plus one that I would personally recommend you try when visiting Poland. If you got any value from this video, please consider subscribing to our channel or dropping us a like down below. If you agree or disagree with anything on this list, please let us know. If you think anything should be added to this list, please let us know. Or if you want to make fun of or compliment my pronunciation of these Polish words, definitely say something. I did try really hard though. But besides all that, I do want to give a big shout out and thank you to Poland. It really was a wonderful trip, and if you're considering it, I would definitely recommend and encourage you to go. But until next time, travel well.